Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accent. Mm. Oh my god, I had a dream last night that we were mm-hmm. in like a live show scenario and you could not remember, like you had a stroke, like you could not remember yeah. our little tagline, and I <laughs> had to jump happen. in and say it, and it was <laughs> really anxiety riddling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That, I don't have it like written down anywhere, so... Every time we record an episode, I panic for a split second. Oh, for like sure. That, and then that's why I say it the exact same way every time, because otherwise I would fuck it up. That's me mm-hmm. when you throw the talk space intro at my way. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's an <laughs> online. Kenyon, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> online therapy. Who are we? <laughs> what? Okay, so I'm Kenyon. <laughs> I'm Lucy, I think. <laughs> and I'm Amanda, last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> and this week we have a very special fan pick episode picked by Missy Gallahue. Woo! Get it. Gallant Gallahue. She's one of our favorite Gallahues. Totally. <laughs> Look at you, Gallahue. <laughs> um, and Missy selected the topic... Fatal friends. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, Missy. And yes, Mm -hmm. we will kill each other one day. (laughs) (laughs) And the fact that it hasn't happened yet is just a miracle. Miraculous. Yeah. We get close. (laughs) Um, Also, Fatal Friends is the name of a Lifetime movie. Of course it is. Based on a case. Yep. But... Did not select that case because I wanted to broaden our horizons a little same bit. Same Z's, same Z's. Good. Um, so before we get started, Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing for Fatal Friends? We have paired today's episode with the independent white blend <laughs> from Wink Wine Club. <laughs> no new friends. Yeah, uh, this was literally chosen because after looking at some of these stories, we were all like, mm, it's straight up better to not have friends. Yeah, not so worth it. So the independent, not worth it at all. The introverted uh, independent yeah. <laughs> the hermit independent <laughs> white blend cat lady um this is offered by wink wine club Woo-hoo! who is one of our amazing sponsors they are an Woo-hoo! online wine club offering a huge variety of wine that gets delivered right to your door people mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. it's not offered in every state but as we evolve as a society you your state <laughs> may be included um but this call is a your great legislator legalize yeah, it exactly please <laughs> please call your legislators demanding alcohol delivery um <laughs> This is a great way to drink along with the show. We do uh, typically post on our website and social media our upcoming wines. And you can go to trywink.com forward slash gals. That's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com forward slash gals to fill your cart with those wines. And if it's your first time there, you're going to get 20 bucks off your first order. First time I used it, I used our little promo code and got like five bottles of wine for $30. Their pricing is awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. You can have it delivered directly to your home or like I do to my local Walgreens, which is a FedEx drop off and pick up location because you do have to be 21 to sign for the package. Um, But the varietals are awesome. I always encounter fun new things that I actually have never tried before. And they do Mm -hmm. have the option of even taking this like flavor quiz if you're newer to wine and they can help kind of narrow down some things that might be fitting to your palate. So it's a win, win, win for all involved. I like that they have what one might can. I mean, they're not lowbrow, but they have like super affordable wines, and then oh, they yeah. have the occasional like much higher end wine. Oh yeah, they so, do like thirty dollar reserve bottles that are just gorge. Yeah, so they have a really nice variety. You can kind of treat yourself, but then also have your like everyday, yep, <laughs> literally everyday wine. <laughs> yeah, and they they have cool features where you can like send a free box as a gift. Yes. Yeah. After, you know, so I recently got like five free boxes that I could send as a gift because we've used so many credits for them. Send it to me. 
Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I sent them to like my mom, my sister, yeah. a friend who had just had a baby. So it's like you haven't been able to drink for nine months. Here's a case of wine. Like it's such a fun, fun program. I so sent one to try my husband. Trywink.com <laughs> forward slash gals. Of course you did. You <laughs> fucking cheat. <laughs> Anyway, this particular bottle was made with organic Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris grapes that are handpicked from the same Napa Valley vineyard. Um, this is a gently pressed white, which means... Our they're, favorite. Yeah, well, we liked the firm <laughs> press, but the gentle press mm-hmm. is just mm-hmm. not going to get as much like um, mm-hmm. out of the skins. Oh, right. So it's focusing <laughs> more on... <laughs> calm down, everyone. <laughs> on just the juice Light that's in the candles, grape. Get yeah. some gentle press. Gentle press. Going. I mean, exactly. variety is key. Will thank you. Mm-hmm. Variety is key. Um, <laughs> this was fermented in stainless steel first, so it was fermented in that like sort of pure way where it's not going to take on a bunch of additional flavors. But then it was aged in a neutral oak style barrel for six months. So that's going to just kind of soften it without actually enhancing a ton of flavors within the wine. That neutral oak is like super chill. You're not going to get a big buttery oak bomb out of this wine. They just want to kind of mellow it out after that stainless fermentation. Mm. Nice. Um, and then you'll you're, organic is like such a buzzy way to talk about wine these days. You're seeing a lot of organic and vegan produced Mm -hmm. wines um Mm -hmm. so i thought it was interesting to note that organic wine is typically wine made from grapes that are grown in accordance with principles of organic farming which typically exclude the use of artificial chemical fertilizers pesticides fungicides and herbicides Mm. so when it comes Mm -hmm. to winemaking organic winemaking is actually much more challenging because as we've talked about in a lot of other um, episodes, how certain varietals especially will be susceptible to like vine rot or different, you know, molds and fungi just from the environment in which they're grown. So Mm -hmm. choosing to exclude the use of any kind of product, any kind of chemical that's going to reduce that risk makes it so much more of like a hands-on process. You really have to be attuned to what, you know, your grapes are doing so that you can, organically basically step in and harvest before it gets to that point instead of just treating it with, you know, an antifungal medication, basically. Um, So that kind of also explains why organic wines can tend to be a little bit more expensive, but more and more places are just turning themselves over to like organic and sustainable farming styles. So Mm -hmm. it's your, this is going to be pretty common moving forward. Do organic wines have any difference in tannins? Because I heard from someone like, oh, I get headaches from the tannins. I can only drink organic wine. Is that a real thing or are they mistaken? I mean, I think that that's a tough thing to answer because t- everybody reacts to the things that they put in their body in a slightly different way. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I, I honestly don't know if if organic wines tend to work better for that specific person than like awesome by all means. I'm sure that right. there is some validity to that. But I don't know if from like a tasting standpoint, if you had an organic wine of the same varietal in a similar, you know, aging style, same vintage, whatever, next mm-hmm. to one that's not certified organic, I couldn't trust my palate to taste the difference, even if the tannin level was like slightly different. I feel like there are so mm-hmm. many different factors at play when you're mm-hmm. growing these grapes whether organically so or not, that it would be hard to, you know, tie together Literally organic the with that year tannins. Is, yeah. is making a huge difference. Like, it's so subtle, the things mm-hmm. that can swoop in and completely change a vintage of wine or, or a style. So I, I don't know how to answer that question, but it could be. It's Anything is fucking possible. I mean, we have a podcast, so, like, anything is possible. Aliens exist. Um, Aliens exist. Anything is possible. (laughs) The primary difference in the way that organic wine is defined relates to the use or, like we said, non-use of preservatives during the winemaking process. So that includes, like, from beginning, middle to end. So if uh, preservatives are introduced after harvest as part of, you know, the, like, bottling process, then that wine is still not organic. If it's mm-hmm. like added after the fact, um, mm-hmm. this particular bottle, the independent is clean and dry. It has a nice richness for an otherwise light white. So it's more medium bodied. Um, you're going to get some tasting notes of apple, lemon rind, uh, on the nose, some white flowers. Like it's a nice floral Ooh, wine, white but then, flowers. yeah, white flowers, like for okay. a wedding. Um, oh. 
But yeah, uh, again, medium body, dry finish. It's a 12.7% ABV, which is a little bit lighter on the booze scale. Um, makes for like a nice, mild, and drinkable summer white blend. Yum. So let's nice. just pop her open and see how we feel about it. Yeah. Using our new, not me, but you, nice pap wine winged, keys. Winged corkscrew. corkscrew. Winged corkscrew. Right, it's not a wine key anymore. Uh, available on our website, wineandcrimepodcast.bigcartel.com mm-hmm, for merch. Mm-hmm, 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 okay. mm-hmm, correct. And... Woo! Ooh. Ow! Ow! Fresh pop. Nice, nice pop. Nice pop. Okay, I'm going to leave and go to a patio and drink this in the sun, and you guys just finish the episode. Mild Bye. and drinkable pop. <laughs> no, just like me. <laughs> Love it. All right. Cheers, yeah. ladies. Cheers. Lucy, what's our background in psych All right. for Fatal Friends? <clears throat> this was a weird one to research, so I'm kind of all over the place, so bear with me. Into it. Uh, okay. So, according to the paper entitled The Neuro- Neuroethology of Friendship. I already hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most sciencey definition of friendship. <laughs> According to robot law, we have friendships. I have been programmed to be friend you. On that note, Westworld has gotten cray, you guys. Don't even get me started there. We literally do not no have spoilers. enough time in the world to talk about Westworld. I love Westworld. I'm going to have to start watching it. Okay. Yeah. It's so good. It got really, really good this season. Shit is lit. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> friends are pairs of individuals that engage in bidirectional affiliative that is non-aggressive, non-reproductive interactions with such frequency and consistency so as to differentiate them from non-friends. When this episode <laughs> reaches the aliens on other planets, this is going to be really useful information. Yeah, I know. You're welcome, aliens. You're oh welcome. Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> you have to read God. all of your notes like that. <laughs> no, it's really exhausting. reproductive <laughs> You are a true friend. <laughs> By the definition laid out he, in uh, one, you one, release. zero, one, zero, zero, one, y- one. You cause one my friend, brain to release one. serotonin at a pleasurable level. <laughs> oh my God. Incredible. Oh my God. Okay, so social bonding, <laughs> aka friendship. Exists across the animal kingdom as well. It's not just unique to humans, which is fun. Oh, unlikely animal friends are my favorite YouTube oh, videos. Yes. Those are alongside really great. Russian car accidents and baby fails. <laughs> <laughs> Old people doing things. And people being pulled over by the police and them claiming that they're sovereign citizens. Yeah. I love those fucking videos. I love those videos. The cops are like, dude. I, okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so because it exists across the animal kingdom, it seems to be an evolutionary trait, just having oh. friends. So scientists have found that in primates, uh, primates have evolved from living relatively solitary lives to um, living in stable groups of multiple males and females, and then from there mm-hmm. to pair bonded groups after that, which is kind of sweet. Mm-hmm. Pair- well, that sounds like human society. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. Primates. Or robot society. <laughs> I'm Kilroy. So Kilroy. 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 <laughs> um, so pair bondings aren't super common with primates right now, but that's more so in dolphins, Amanda's favorite. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Elephants, the spotted hyena, and wow. even asses. <laughs> well, we know that one for a fact. <laughs> Our asses are, are bonded, children. you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I laugh like a hyena, so it's perfect. Perfect. It all circles back. And Amanda laughs like a dolphin. Just kidding. Oh my. Amanda masturbates like a dolphin. I can tell oh you that Oh, my much. God. You've never seen it. 
know, but I know the frequency. <laughs> You've never do seen... dolphins masturbate a lot? I think they. I think so. How I mean, how then, would they right. masturbate? I can appreciate just that. like I don't know, rubbing rub it up on, on something. <laughs> All right, do dolphins masturbate? Did I just make this up? I thought that they did. They have casual sex. They're the like, sex. only other mammals that have sex for pleasure. That I do. I don't know how they'd masturbate. Yep, yep. They rub their genitals on things. Incredible. <laughs> Gross. All right, dolphins just went up like three points in my book. Yeah. That's from zero <laughs> to three points out of like 5,000 points, so it's yep. not much, Ken, but it's something. Kenyon, I really hope your neighbors heard you say, yep, they rub their genitals on things. <laughs> it's confirmed. His dick fell off. <laughs> His dick fell off. My oh, neighbors are like 89 years old. I keep Good. forgetting that I am now recording in an apartment complex, not a house. So I have someone <laughs> 10 feet from me right now, and I just screamed his dick fell off. So Won't be the last time. You're welcome. We won't also always be recording when you shout things like that. No. <laughs> just get used Usually to just it. just me having intense conversations with my dog and rabbit. This is your new reality, neighbor. I have so much to live for. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I thought it was interesting across the animal kingdom, mother-daughter social bonds are the most prevalent, followed by siblings. Mm. Hmm, interesting. And are they also the most challenging of the bonds? <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> the most complex. Lots of angst, yes. strife, <laughs> passive aggressiveness. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Um, social bonding in baboons accounts for a roughly 50% increase in life longevity. So wow. it evolved evolutionarily because it helped them survive longer. And yep. then, yeah. of course, social isolation, as you can imagine, is particularly harmful, especially in elderly baboons mm. and That's humans. So sad. I know. Sign up for Meals on Wheels, you guys. Yeah. yeah. My mom does it. She says it's very Aww. fulfilling. That's oh, really that's cute. Really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, brains wise, there is uh, evidence that the more complex a species social structure is, the larger their brains are. Oh, interesting. Got to keep track of all that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's very complicated to nav navigate these nuances. Mm -hmm. um, so humans and many animals also have to navigate and assess the quality of social relationships between other pairs of individuals. So you're yep. looking at another group and you're like, are they a friend of my friend or are they a friend of my enemy? Mm. Mm. This okay. is like a Vanderpump Rules situation. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> And then, of course, there's the reward center part of the brain and also so like the br the part that releases those uh, hormones, which we'll kind of get to in a little bit. And then also what's called the orbitofrontal cortex, which is specialized for receiving and analyzing social information like this. Mm -hmm. So okay. Mm -hmm. the brain is a fascinating place, you guys. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from the Doctor Ways In dot com. Oh God! <laughs> um, we not only constantly accumulate socially relevant information, we also have continually have to continually make value judgments on what pieces of information is more relevant than others. This yep. is the, this is the cutest example in the world, you guys. There, <clears throat> there is evidence that our cousins, the monkeys, also make such judgments. For example, male rhesus macaques will forego a small amount of juice reward in order to oh. see a picture of another monkey. Oh, my oh. God. Give me it. I know, oh. but it quickly... They just want little monkey Instagram. I, yeah. You know, a small amount monkey of gram. juice reward. Um, but then it turns gross in the next sentence. But it will take oh, a magnum-sized orange juice to entice them to take their eyes off of a picture of a female perineum. Okay. <laughs> the patriarchy ruins everything. So, so once again, they just want a monkey in Exactly. <laughs> I have so many pictures of my perineum on Instagram right now. 
<laughs> and Tinder. <Ew. laughs> Correct. Why give away the juice for free? <laughs> the juice. Why reward? buy the monkey when the perineum is free? <laughs> I don't know. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm just stuck on juice reward. It's so precious, and then it gets so That's foul. Basically. What our entire podcast centers around is Juice yeah. Reward. Juice Reward. Yeah. Totally. Wink Wine Club. Juice Reward and Crime. Juice Reward Wine Club. When we start our own, that will be its name. Juice Reward. No one will subscribe because it sounds like a horrible cleanse diet. It does. It really does. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and we'll include pictures of macaque female perineums in every box. <laughs> Amanda's perineum. Adopt a perineum. Ew. <laughs> Jane Goodall gets involved. <laughs> this must stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, oh my God. so the brain releases oxytocin, which is the love hormone, as well as dopamine and serotonin when you're with your friends, aw, or chatting with them on Skype. It also releases less uh, cortisol, which is the stress hormone, when that person is confronted with adverse stimuli when you're with a friend as then compared to when you're alone. Kind of like how I'm not nervous when we do our live shows because we're together. But if you ask me to get up there alone, I would probably shit my romper. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> shit <Yeah>. my romper. <laughs> <laughs> the worst kind of clothing to shit. <laughs> I'm less nervous for our live shows because Amanda yells at me every time I say that I'm nervous. No, That's you're not. true, I do that. <laughs> you're fucking fine. Now get your skinny ass out there and start dancing. <laughs> start tapping. <laughs> start tapping. Oh my God. Okay, so then I started um, <clears throat> looking at I was trying to find more psychology about friends who kill either each other or with each other. Uh Um, Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot. So I just stumbled across a bunch of cases. So and a lot of movies. Yes. So this is sort of the my patchwork portion of the great film Unfriended, which is about Facebook bullying turned ghost story. Oh, Oh. haven't seen it. Awful. And my friend and I accidentally saw it in theaters thinking we were going to the sixth Fast and Furious movie. (laughs) (laughs) And ended up happy mistake. (laughs) <laughs> in the wrong theater. Well, okay. He told us the wrong time, and we were like, well, we've already gone all the way out here. We're going to okay. see a movie. Unfriended. What's playing right now? And the only thing that was playing was Unfriended, and we were the only ones in the theater, and it was atrocious and wonderful. Hi, Tony. <laughs> That's the best. That's the best. Amazing. It was Tony. Of course. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Officer Patton. Officer Patton. Okay, so there are lots of different cases and motivations for, again, either killing your best friend or killing with your best friend. Um, Nailed it. Thelma and Louise style. Mm -hmm. So that would be Mm -hmm. two friends helping each other kill. So your motivations might be vigilantism, as in Thelma and Louise, um, Mm -hmm. killing an abusive partner or whatever. Or it could be a thrill-seeking situation like uh, natural-born killers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which was also kind of an abuse situation, I think. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. I can't remember. Mm -mm. Um, And then, as usual, it could also be financially motivated, like insurance, scam, robbery, theft, etc. Okay. Um, And personally speaking, if I were planning a murder, I would definitely involve my best friend. And it probably wouldn't be Amanda because she'd like accidentally live tweet the whole thing. That's correct. I'm really into social and media. We leave a trail of crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Dorito I crumbs. I am not the friend to call if you need call to murder me. someone. Yeah. I will help. Yeah. Be like, Amanda, you just posted an Instagram of the scene. <laughs> like, sorry about it. We said no yeah. social media. <laughs> but I look really cute today. Yeah, I do. It's really good lighting. The dig a grave diet slash workout. This storage unit has great lighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag good hair day. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, like, your friends are morally obligated to keep your secret, and in this situation, contractually obligated. Wasn't there a clause for, like, homicide in our contract? 
Let's just assume I think there is. We can add it. Yeah. We'll add a writer. A writer? <laughs> Um, also, it's really hard to move a body. Just saying. Yeah, I've got a bad back, so you can. I will help out, but you're gonna need a third. Yeah, oh, your right. husband's strong. Yeah, that's. I true. do not trust him, though. <laughs> you don't trust your husband. <laughs> How about Kenyon's on the lookout, and she will hold Amanda's phone so she can't do any live tweeting, and then right. Amanda and I can. Yeah, that we works. can haul it. All right, I'll just use my Google Glass. And do it with my eyes. Oh, my God. <laughs> cool. You'll also hold her <laughs> Apple Watch. I don't trust yeah. her not to tweet at any given moment. I'm always connected. <laughs> but if she doesn't tweet at any given moment, it'll be suspicious. That's okay, true. We'll also this could involve, work against you. We'll also involve Andrea, because she's our tweeting proxy at all of our live shows. Mm. So um, yep. She's also yep. real resourceful, so she'd be really good in a crisis, like a murder situation. Yeah, yeah. okay. Andrea, yeah. you're in. Yes. Kenyon's out. Now to find a target. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous game. Let's just start hunting Scott. <laughs> oh my God. Scott, we're hunting you. <laughs> See you soon. Run. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be gone by the time this airs. We're giving you a head start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so also there would be like Heather's style killing. Yes. So, um, Love that movie. And so that would be killing your BFF. There are plenty mm-hmm. of possible motivations, as we know. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Jealousy, romantic entanglements, love triangles, making a podcast together, <laughs> reading <laughs> the other's diary, Kenyon. Oops. Yes. Yeah, I didn't read it. You read it. I didn't. Yeah. It was Jessica. It was Jessica. And Scott. Scott. Yeah. That's why we're hunting him. Yeah. <laughs> Complications from a high school parking pass. Still bitter. <laughs> Still bitter. <laughs> Et cetera. Oh, my God. Um, so while I was looking at that, I came across, this was a case that we agreed not to cover, so I'm just going to touch on it. everywhere. But those two girls who killed um, Skylar Niece... Because mm-hmm. they, quote, mm-hmm. just didn't like her. They stabbed her, like, over 50 times. Yeah. And she was, like, lured into believing they were close friends. They yeah. were close friends. It's just so crazy. There were a couple, because ca- there's also um, the Slender Man Yeah, Yes, girls. that one was so weird. That's the Wisconsin one, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was in uh, Wisconsin. Those two mm-hmm. girls, I'm not even going to mention their name, but they killed their friend Bella Lutner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they lured her into the woods, but the Skylar niece—I think it was just in one, one of their backyards. I thought it was in a car. I don't know. Uh, I, the article that I was referencing said that the two murderer girls uh, told, like invited her out to smoke pot, so she mm-hmm. snuck out, and maybe it was in a car, but. I mean, I've yeah. done some really dumb things for the promise of pot <laughs> in my lifetime. So I get it. Not, e- not even good pot. No. Oh. <laughs> Ditch weed. Nailed it. <laughs> um, okay. So also, I just wanted to talk briefly about, there's a movie called Heavenly Creatures. Did either of you cover this case? No. Nope. Okay, so in New Zealand in 1954, Honora, is that how you say that name? Honora? Mm. I don't know. Honora Parker was killed by her 16-year-old daughter, Pauline, and Pauline's best friend, Juliet Hulm, who was okay, 15. Okay, so they teamed up to kill someone else. <clears throat> to kill one of the moms. Yeah, so um, these two girls were hanging out. I think they'd been just best friends for several years, and they... We're sort of odd, but then I was reading about why people thought they were odd. I was like, oh, my God, you're describing my childhood. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so. we, we would have been way more odd. It was, like, so. it was like the two girls just engaged in fantasy play in the woods behind their house for hours oh and hours on end and, like, oh my God. had well, sleepovers shit. and screamed a lot. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, the, the parents of the girls thought that they might be lesbians and homosexuality was considered a mental illness 
at the time. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, 1954. In 1954. Yeah. Um, so the 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 parents, I think, of both girls were kind of scheming to like keep them away from each other, and mm-hmm. that's why. And so then they were the two girls were like out to lunch with uh, Pauline's mom. And then they were walking back home kind of like through the woods and the girls came back to the restaurant where they had just been eating covered in blood. And they're like, my mom fell. She hit her head. She's bleeding. Like someone help us. Oh my God. And, but then when the cops got there, it was obvious that she was bludgeoned to death. Plus the two girls were covered in blood. Uh, So, um, they, they beat her with like a brick and a, bag or something like some brick tied up um so yeah they were 15 and 16 they were you know convicted and served some some time but they're out now and one of them is actually like a famous true true crime writer who lives in england yeah amazing under under the same name no she's got a pseudonym oh fuck well now we get to guess every time we have a true crime author on the show we get to wonder. Well, I can oh tell God. you what it That'll is. That'll be the first interview um, question every time. She writes under the name Anne Perry. Oh, okay. So she Let's definitely get is her on the an show. English author of historical detective fiction. Okay. She wrote, it says the Thomas Pitt and William Monk series. Does that mean Monk? The show? Oh my God. I uh, fucking hope so. I hope so I too. I have no idea. I don't know. Well, anyway, that is my case. That is my segment. Your case. <laughs> that's my case. All right. That's, that's your case. I rest my case. Um. <laughs> if you are tempted to kill alongside or just kill your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> there is help. There is help out there for you. And it's in your pocket. Or if yeah. you think your best friend is plotting to kill you. Yeah, I mean, that's more Maybe. the discussion that I have with my talk space right. therapist. <laughs> <laughs> They're plotting Good. against me. I know it. <laughs> um, if you have these issues, check out the online therapy company, Talkspace. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Talkspace makes it easy, affordable, and convenient to connect you with a licensed therapist who's going to actually give you good advice, better advice than just your friends. Yeah, Mm. that's true. You guys give Mm -hmm. horrible advice. Objective. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Texting my therapist right now to complain about you. We're tattling on each other to our therapist. (laughs) We all have the same therapist. Thank God we don't. Um, That would be amazing. Like, I can't keep up with you bitches. That would backfire really terribly, yeah, it would. really fast. <laughs> um, if you do start Talkspace and realize that you have the same therapist as your best friend and it's just not working out, you can easily change your therapist at any time for any reason without having to have that in-person like breakup conversation, mm-hmm. which is really which is nice. super awkward, and I've definitely ghosted a few therapists in my day. It happens. It happens. This yeah. just eliminates a lot of that awkwardness and just makes it nice and easy. You can talk. You can FaceTime. You can text. You can voice memo. There's lots of ways that you can interact with your therapist at literally any time, day or night. They have their office hours to respond to you, but it's mm-hmm. awesome when you're in the moment and you don't have to wait two weeks for an in session to try to remember the mm-hmm. details of why you were having an issue at that time. Yeah. That's my, that's mm-hmm. honestly my favorite thing about it. My therapist checks in with me every day, reads what I have to say. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Highly recommend. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So for $30 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S. Again, Talkspace.com forward slash gals. Get a therapist in your pocket and treat your brain. Do it. You won't regret it. And now a word from our other sponsor. Hello Fresh! Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Ow. Is well, I'm deaf kit. now. <laughs> Is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. Mmm. Emphasis on enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. Each box is made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated, trusted sources. Mm -hmm. 
You can enjoy not having to plan dinner, spend money on takeout for an easy night, or worry about gathering ingredients week after week after week after week. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It never Mm -hmm. ends. It doesn't. (laughs) Can I just talk about, like, Zach and I recently did a budget, and we realized how much we spend on takeout, and it's appalling. Yeah, yeah, it's an alarming statistic. I refuse yeah. to look at my <laughs> bank account and how many like Postmates <laughs> orders I have on there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. HelloFresh yep. can really curb that really bad habit and save mm-hmm. you money. Big and time. you won't spend all night in the kitchen because their recipes only take around 30 glorious minutes. Yep. That's and easy. That's one glass of wine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, one glass of wine for a normal person. Um, (laughs) Your HelloFresh account is easy to manage with the ability to choose your delivery date and to match your ever-changing schedule. You can pause deliveries if you're going out of town. Um, Yeah, it's awesome. And I have had so many meals (laughs) through HelloFresh. Recently, (laughs) when Kenyon was in town, we actually took one of our HelloFresh meal kits to our friend Scott's house, and we made Mm -hmm. the apricot glazed chicken. Um, It was absolutely delicious. It comes with like these little sort of like fingerling potatoes that you roast and some really fresh green beans. And I love how the ingredients are packaged, like the little tiny jar of apricot jam. I like almost cried holding it in my palm. And it's nice jam. It's yeah, the it's really bun nice. memo, like nice jam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was delicious. And I mean, we pretty much just sat there and made Scott cook it because he quote unquote loves to cook, but it was so yep. easy to watch him put together and it took <laughs> no time at all. And the recipe card mm-hmm. is right there. It walks you through every step. Um, mm-hmm. It's awesome. I can't recommend it highly enough. It was really good portions. Yeah. Too. So for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com forward slash gals30. That is H-E-L-L-O-F-R-E-S-H dot com forward slash G-A-L-S three zero. Again, visit HelloFresh.com forward slash gals30 and enter promo code gals30 for 30 bucks off your first week. Love it. Do it. Treat your gut. Treat your kitchen. Okay. Uh, My case this week is particularly cray because it involves kids. Mm -hmm. Mm. And not like teenagers, but like little fucking kids. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I still have flashbacks to our Killer Kids episode because that Uh, one was... Super gnarly. That my sister gave birth to while <laughs> listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My second niece so was born. That was like my second niece's birth playlist was oh. the Killer Kids episode. Amazing. <laughs> and she's been exhibiting some strange signs. Correct. No, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. She's like an angel baby. I love um, her. Okay. But where are the so. sewing scissors? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, March 6th, 1989, rural Polk Township, Pennsylvania, which is nestled in the Poconos, Mm. um, which until like last year, I assumed were um, islands in the Caribbean. Oh, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) The the Poconos, it just sounds My grandparents lived in Pennsylvania forever. My grandma still does live there. So I just grew up knowing what the Poconos were, but I can totally understand that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I we'll never, get there um, fast and then we'll take it take slow. It slow. That's yeah. where you want to oh, go. My Lord. Yeah. Pennsylvania Poconos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pinocchios. <laughs> I, it just sounds like, a, you know, and I, everyone talked about a holiday there. Oh, yeah. Pocono, there. Kokomo. Yeah. Like, I get it. <laughs> okay. You're not that dumb. You're dumb, but you're not that dumb. <laughs> okay. So, but I can see why you're that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing this podcast has taught me, it's that I'm a lot dumber than I thought I was. There it is. <laughs> Self-awareness. Okay. I love it. So, on March 6th, 1989, there was a snow day in this area, mm-hmm. okay? Fourth grader Cameron Robert Coker's parents oh my gosh. Um, still had to go to work, even though it's a snow day. Uh, his mother worked as a sewing machine operator, and his father was a day laborer. The sewing scissors. Um, 
<laughs> so little Cameron was sent to spend the day off from school at his next door neighbor's house, the, the Raddies. Mm -hmm. Richard and Trudy Raddy. Um, this was the normal setup when there was a snow day. Uh, the families were close. Uh, so, you know, this was completely normal setup. The Raddies also had six kids. So their wow. house was like the hangout spot in the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Cameron, quote, stocky and sandy haired. He looks like a child of the corn, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's what <laughs> awesome. I pictured when you said that. Yeah. Um, he was nine, almost 10 years old at the time. His 10th birthday was about six weeks away. Mm -hmm. Also at the house was Cameron's friend and fellow neighbor girl, Jessica Ann Carr. Okay. Okay, so the Raddies have their six kids, but then it's a snow day, so basically, like, the, they're, like, the daycare for the whole neighborhood. People are just, all the kids are just hanging out there. Jessica was a couple years younger than Cameron and in first grade, so she was only seven, I believe. Um, but they'd both been part of the same group of neighborhood kids, all playing together for as long as either of them could remember. Okay. Jessica and Cameron both loved playing video games. Nice. And the snow day provided the perfect opportunity to break out the Nintendo. Ooh, Nailed it. And have some fun. Heat up some pizza rolls. Oh, mm -hmm. I want pizza some rolls. I'm doing that today. Totinos. Um, at the time, again, 1989, uh, there was a video game called Spy Hunter. Nice. Okay. And this originally had been an arcade game, but then it transitioned to uh, also being an early generation video game on like Atari and Nintendo and a few different gaming systems. And this is like the most that I will ever know or have to say about <laughs> video games. Um, <laughs> so it's basically like a flat aerial view of a road. It's mm -hmm. super basic, it's 1989. Um, and the players drive down this road in, like, a James Bond-esque sports car. And then mm -hmm. they, like, spray enemy vehicles with bullets from machine guns and other weapons that Great. are, like, mounted to their vehicle. Perfect. Lovely. Okay. But it's also, like, super old school graphics. So it's not like it's, it's not like today's graphic violent video games where it's... Very realistic. You know. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, cartoons. Okay. Um, Jessica had received this Nintendo game for her birthday and was already an impressive player. So she had a Nintendo system at home. She'd already gotten the Spy Hunter game as a gift. She'd played it a lot at home. She was really good at it, even though she was only seven. Cameron did not have a Nintendo system at home, so he definitely had less experience playing the game. Uh-oh. But undoubtedly, Cameron thought that he had the advantage of age over Jessica because he was almost three years older than her and probably also thought he had a gender advantage over the girl because fucking patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Because having a penis suddenly makes you better at video games, apparently. Apparently. Because I didn't know that you played them with your dick, but apparently you do. Oh, right. I bet a lot of people do. Yeah. I'm going to try now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Get that strap on. Yeah. Um, so when Jessica whooped his ass in the game, Woo! Cameron's fragile male baby ego utterly collapsed. Mm. Oh, no. The Raddies, uh, Richard and Trudy, then pulled the plug on the game because they wanted, one, the kids hadn't, like, cleaned up all their, like, juice rewards properly. <laughs> 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 and then two, you know, it's a snow day. They like wanted the kids to like go get some fresh air probably. So they're like, okay, no more video games. Which further enraged Cameron. Oh, because oh he God. lost his chance at a rematch. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. He chose to leave the neighbor's house in a huff and returned home, but his parents were still out at work. So he's like, you know, screw this, little fourth grader. I'm going home. And the raddies probably were like, okay, bye. Like, mm -hmm. 
and whatever. They have a million fucking kids that they're looking after right, right. now. You are my least priority right now. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Who knows? Like, he could have been going home to, like, make himself a sandwich. Like, who yeah. knows? Um, at this point in the story, it is important to note that, like many in this rural Pennsylvania slash Caribbean community, <laughs> um, <laughs> Cameron's father was an avid hunter and owned 10 guns. Oh, no. <sighs> well, we can all see where this is going. He also taught his young son, again, Cameron is nine fucking years old. Which I actually don't necessarily have a problem with when you are part of a rural community and you actually hunt with your family. It's like, that. I don't care if a nine-year-old knows how to use a gun, but lock that fucking shit up. Exactly. This kid should have no way to get access to a gun without the supervision of an adult in a situation where they're, like, out hunting. Well, just wait, Okay. That's not so clear cut. I think nine is too young to know how to operate a firearm or, you know, whatever. Have had practice doing that. I feel like someone yeah, I mean, should if you be don't, at if least. If you don't grow up in an environment where you're hunting or you live on a farm or, like, guns are a part of your everyday life, I can see why that would make you really uncomfortable. But I don't feel like this is that crazy, in my opinion. Also, well, it depends on the child. Yeah. Well, Okay. So the father taught Cameron how to handle firearms, and Cameron often wore camouflage clothing, kind of in, like, imitation of his hunter dad, um, and was sometimes called by the nickname Little Rambo. Oh, Lord. Ew. <laughs> Awful. We don't like this. All right, so he's alone in the house. Cameron goes up to the second floor master bedroom, Gets the key to his father's locked gun cabinet, which was supposedly hidden, but obviously not very well hidden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think even, like, I just don't think there should be guns in the home. I think if you want to own guns, there should be a government-owned place that you go, you show your ID card, you're handed your gun, you return it uh, at a certain time. Like, I mean, I, this is just irresponsible gun ownership. A, like, fucking gun cabinet with a key that a nine-year-old can reach. Like, yeah. They yeah. do better. It's the 80s. Safes exist. Like, fuck off. This is not... Well, it's not I mean, like... On, I don't know. On paper, he had a locked gun cabinet and he, quote, hid the key. But mm -hmm. it's... that's Kids know where to find that shit. Like, kids know what's forbidden and where to go looking for stuff. They right. seek that out. It's yeah. taboo. It's interesting to them. It's just natural. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so he gets the key, opens the gun cabinet, selects a thirty-five caliber Marlin rifle. Mm -hmm. Cameron then finds the correct ammo for that particular rifle. Oh, my God. Which, well, which he's, is, been, he's learned how to operate guns. He would know. Yeah. Yeah which is kept in a separate and also locked drawer. Mm -hmm. So the, the parents, you know, by all accounts, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But I personally just don't think it's enough. Um, Cameron then loads the weapon. By this time, Jessica is outside the ratty house along with everybody else, and they are getting ready to ride on the back of the ratty's uh, snowmobiles. Mm-hmm. So she's literally sitting on the back of a snowmobile driven, I think, by Trudy Ratty. Probably already other... forgotten that, like, this yeah. video game nonsense even Kerfuffle transpired. Even yeah. happened. Right. Yeah. And all the other kids are, like, running around, you know, like, they're all in the yard getting ready to go on the snowmobile. Cameron goes to the bedroom window, removes the window screen. Mm -hmm. He points the rifle at his target. She's 100 yards away. He lines Jessica up in the scope. And remember, she's right next to other people. Right. And other children. Yep. And he squeezes off a single shot. Jesus. Fuck. Cameron then methodically returns the window screen, hides the spent shell casing in the ammo box, and oh puts the rifle God. back in the gun cabinet and relocks it. Wow. Wow. 
Meanwhile, Jessica was hit in the back and the bullet pierced her spine and right lung. Jesus. And obviously utter panic fucking ensued because suddenly Jessica's slumped over and then suddenly there's blood and she's non-responsive and they're like, oh my God, what the, what fuck? the fuck? And then they're yeah. like, oh my God, she's been shot. Like, wh- how? from where, how, what's happening? Um, the Raddies bring dying Jessica into their house because there's just been gunfire from a mystery source. So yeah. they're like, everybody fucking get in the house. Um, followed by a pack of, like, screaming, sobbing children. Yeah. Richard Ratty almost immediately, I mean, I'm sure he phones 911, but then he phones uh, Cameron's house to tell the boy to stay inside because, quote, Thinking, there's, a, yeah. there's a sniper on the loose. Right. And I don't know what Cameron said back, but this Richard guy is like you know a neighborhood dad and he's like yeah. oh god we have we have almost all the kids but cameron went to his house like stay inside be safe mm-hmm. yeah you exactly. know thinking about everyone's kids and their safety um cameron ignores the advice obviously yeah goes back across the street to the ratty household walks inside apparently unmoved by the chaos he walks right past Jessica, who is dying in the living room. Good God. Like, bleeding out, basically, surrounded by all these people freaking out. He walks right past, sits down, and starts playing a video game. Stop it. Oh, he is a monster. This kid is disturbed to the max. Wow. That's, wow. He, he then said only, quote, if you don't think about it, you won't be sad. Jesus Christ. That is fucked up. Yeah. That is psychologically not right. Fucked. Yeah. So Cameron's clearly fucking psychotic behavior draws the suspicion of investigators. And um, they then these suspicions were confirmed when later that afternoon, a state trooper, quote, noticed a small half moon shaped cut on Cameron's forehead. Ah. Which oh, is from a, the shell. Yeah. Which is a telltale rifle scope recoil yep. wound. <clears throat> um, and then police later found Cameron's blood on the rifle and uh, near the bedroom window. And that's when, like, the grim reality of the situation sunk in. Good God. So they were like, oh, my God, this kid shot his friend. So Cameron was obviously uh, assessed by numerous... Child psychologists. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By a fleet of child Numerous psychologists. talk space therapists. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they all seem to agree that while he did appear emotionally divested from what he'd done, um, and at one court appearance he actually dozed off. Stop it. Yeah. What? Jeez. He's, he was a not even 10-year-old kid. He was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and these court appearances, like, he obviously wouldn't understand anything that's being said, basically, in this court hearing, I would assume, because it's all, like, jargon and whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, he just fell asleep. <laughs> okay. Um, but the psychologist said that he did appear to know right from wrong and did not suffer from any diagnosed mental illness. Okay. Which, like, how, though? Yeah. Yeah. But it's also 1989, so maybe nowadays they would be like, okay, you've got this. Right. Um, but, yeah, they basically were like, no, he's, he's fit to stand trial, I guess. Wow. However, however you want to word it. Um, it's thought that Cameron may be the youngest accused murderer in the United States like in U.S. history. Um, And his case set off a huge debate over whether or not minors should ever be charged as adults. Oh, I was going to ask that. Because he's, like, definitely a minor. He's nine years old. He's way minor. But it's also way premeditated, creepy, whatever. Right, he's clearly a danger to society. Right. Well, he doesn't understand that he did anything wrong. 
Well, uh, apparently. Well, no, but psychologists are saying that he did knew that he did know that it was wrong because yeah. he did a lot to cover his tracks. You know, I guess. Yeah. But he doesn't understand because he's a child that he like took a life and that's right, permanent. Right, that it's permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was just pissed. Yeah. Or Ugh. how many people that that death would affect, like, right. you know. Yeah. Um, so initially a judge ruled that Cameron should be treated as an adult no. because, okay. because because the murder was quote willful and deliberate. And then this is from a court document, quote, his manipulation of the gun and the window and his dishonesty about the cut on his forehead to his parents and to police reflected an adult level of criminal sophistication and knowledge. He also appeared to show no remorse for the crime. Wow. Which, like, all of that the, is true. It's the only thing that gives us pause is that he's nine, nine. and not 16. Right. You yeah, know? the no remorse thing is clearly because he's such a young child. I mean, mm-hmm. and you also, are able like, to show some emotional maturity yeah. at the age of nine. I think the no remorse thing is indicative of something way deeper, deeper than the fact that he's just nine. But Yeah, when I was nine and I got detention once because somebody pulled my hair... Yeah. On the playground, I like wept confessing to my mother that I'd gotten detention. Mm-hmm. You know? I got a green slip for hitting Scott. Ha, yeah. He deserved it. And I it. remember telling my telling my dad I felt so bad. Yeah, see, you can feel guilt and remorse. Yeah. He didn't because something's going on. Mm-hmm. I didn't even hit him that hard. I know. Bullshit. He was being a and now we're hunting baby. his life. So we're hunting him. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, <laughs> so then the case went through a series of pretrial appeals, which was a long process, um, during which time Cameron was free on bail. Yeah. $50,000 bail. He's out free and attending school under a fake name in a different school district. Good lord. Oh, I would be pissed if I were a parent of another child at that school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He didn't, Ooh. he did, wasn't even in juvie. Like, he did not serve time. Wow. Um, three and a half years later, at the age of 13, Cameron Coker pled no contest to criminal homicide. This plea was the result of a very complex deal in which the judge then convicted Cameron of the lesser charge of, <laughs> quote, misdemeanor involuntary manslaughter. Yikes. Misdemeanor manslaughter? I didn't even yeah. know that existed. Neither, wow. Neither did I, but it was like this very complex deal that they worked out over three years. Um, just Involuntary? Right. That was the most voluntary homicide I've ever heard of. Right. Um, just thinking to remove the window screen. Yeah. Creeps and me put out. It back. Yeah. And pick up the shell yeah. and lock it all up again. Yeah. A lot went into it. And then go it. back over to the house and play video games. Ugh. It's creepy. So Jessica's, I hate it. Jessica's mother was reluctant to agree to this plea deal, stating, um, quote, involuntary manslaughter means it's an accident. It wasn't an accident. Right. Yeah. But she did eventually sign off on the deal, although she then expressed regret for doing so almost immediately. So I think they just pressured her into agreeing to this to avoid a trial and it had already gone on for three and a half years, all these pre-trial hearings, so she probably just wanted it to be over. Mm -hmm. Mourn her daughter. Yeah, but it wasn't justice no um under the agreement cameron served no jail time wow uh just probation but like he's a kid yeah. so what does that even yeah. mean right yeah um until the age of 21 the crime would also not appear on his permanent record wow oh <laughs> what yeah Oh, my God. So if you're going to no. kill, do it in the Poconos at the age of nine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the neighbors whose house the children have been playing at, so the Raddies, uh, and they were the ones who, like, were holding Jessica as she lay dying, yeah. um, mm-hmm. called the deal a total di- disgrace. 
Yeah. And the plea agreement did include several conditions, including that Cameron's family not have any weapons at home, presumably, yes. while he still lived there. Yeah. But, like, once he moved out, I bet they were allowed to have guns again. hmm Yeah. And then also that Cameron may not own a gun until he turns 21. Oh, my God. Ugh. Should be the law anyway. Mm-hmm. Just I saying. mean, yeah, but he right. shouldn't ever be allowed to own a firearm after this. Right. Ever. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, that's not a punishment at no, all. No, it's not. No, no, not at all. Um, also, just one more fucking awful tidbit, and this is the part that enraged me the most about this case. Oh, no. So, remember how I mentioned Cameron's birthday was just six weeks away at the time of Jessica's murder? Yeah. Uh... Guess what he received as a birthday gift that year from his family? Uh, A video game console. uh, A fucking Nintendo. That's just gross. That's like fucked up. Yeah, I have goosebumps. That's really disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my case. It's the probably the most fucked up one I've ever done. Yeah, you've done some really fucked up ones. It's up Mm -hmm. there. Nice yeah. work, I guess. Yep. You're, <laughs> yeah. w- you're welcome, internet. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. Super gross. I mean, I don't think that children or minors should be tried as adults no. ever. But, but I also think protective there measures be, were uh, not taken in this situation at all. Right. There can be an in between where someone can, let's say, be held in some sort of juvenile detention until they're 25. Like, we should have a different juvenile detention for, like, 18 to 25, Mm -hmm. you know? And he should have been serving time in an institution, hopefully to get help. Exactly. Hopefully to get some treatment. So that he can be rehabilitated and brought back into society and be functioning. That's better for literally everyone involved, including the general public. And I'm sorry, mm-hmm. the Jessica's family and also the Raddies who were just, like, probably victimized by being witnesses to this, like, they need some justice. I understand yep. that he's yeah. young, but, like, they need something. They got nothing. nothing. Yeah, and he got a fucking Nintendo and no jail he time. Got, he got a Nintendo. He got to go to a new school. No jail time. Nothing. Yeah, he was completely protected in this situation, which, like, again, he's a child. I understand some of that, but, yeah, it's just, it seems like resources were not spent in the right way at all Mm -hmm. in this scenario. Mm -hmm. I think what happened was because that judge said that he should be tried as an adult, public, public, like, Outcry. Sympath- sympathy kind of swung in his favor because he should not yeah. be tried as an adult. Definitely yeah. not. No child should be. That's why there's being a child and being an adult and right. a line between them. Right. You know? But the fact that that swung into the ju- so far the opposite way that there were no repercussions and in fact a fucking reward on his birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a mess. Is so wrong. Yeah. A Nintendo. Yeah, it's gross. I It's really gross and I don't like it at all. Yep. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Yep. And now, a word from our sponsor. If you've previously listened to this show, you've heard us talk about FrameBridge. They make it super easy and affordable to custom frame your favorite things from art prints and posters to the photos on your phone. Here's how it works. You just go to framebridge.com. You upload your photo from your computer or directly from your Instagram feed or from your phone, um, and they go ahead and print it. And if you have a physical item like ticket stubs, art prints, posters, whatever, they will Mm -hmm. provide secure prepaid packaging so that you can mail it in for free to be framed. Mm -hmm. Free, guys. Yeah, free 99. Um, Preview your item online in any frame style. Choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their talented designers. I think that is so cool. Mm -hmm. The expert team at FrameBridge will custom frame your item in days, not weeks or months, and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. They're really fast. They're so fast. Yeah. The best part, instead of the hundreds of dollars you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at $39, yes. and all shipping is free. Mm-hmm. Like, shipping your piece to them, and then them shipping yeah, it back. Shipping it yep. back. Yep. 
Uh, plus, our listeners will get 15% off their first order at framebridge.com when they use our promo code GALS. And um, Framebridge has thousands of five-star reviews because people love them, including us. Mm-hmm. Um, and they even offer a happiness guarantee. So if for any reason you aren't 100% satisfied with your order, they will make it right. Yep. And I love Framebridge. I've gushed about them before on this show. Um, but before they, years before they became a sponsor, I was using them and loving them and... I, you know, I'm looking around this room, my living room right now, and like every single wall has a frame bridge framed piece. Um, I've done both options where I've mailed in a, a like physical item before, and sometimes they were large physical items. All shipping is free. Uh, they handled the piece with like perfect care and attention, so they came back in pristine condition. The frames are really high quality. And it's super affordable. It's way less expensive than going to a local frame store. So you can get started framing your photos or art today by going to framebridge.com and using the promo code GALS. That's F-R-A-M-E-B-R-I-D-G-E dot com. Promo code GALS, G-A-L-S, at checkout. You're going to get 15% off your first order through Framebridge. They're amazing. Treat you art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Smooth. <Yeah. laughs> Another sponsor, guys. Are uh-huh. you ready? I'm ready. We're ready. Sunny days are calling at Mod Cloth. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, nab everything from travel inspired prints, like if you're going to a wedding in South Africa, say. Weird. Um, mm. To breezy sundresses, if you're not going to the Southern Hemisphere and you're staying in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no cardigan required. Plus, denim, denim, and. More denim. More yes. denim. <laughs> I love denim, you guys. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot of denim. Yeah. Um, ModCloth's exclusive collaboration with Wrangler is all about 70s nostalgia, which is, like, really sexy. On point. Um, yes. Yeah. So you can rock a pair of flares or a chambray top with fun embroidered details, get your hippie on, um, and don't forget that perfect swimsuit. So if you are rocking a one-piece or a two-piece, it's totally up to you. They've got it all. You can find a variety of styles in a full-size range. Mm-hmm. I have been shopping on Mod Cloth forever. I love them mm-hmm. so much. I've gotten two bridesmaid dresses through them, one of which was for Lucy's wedding. Um, so cute. I've also gotten bathing suits, fun casual pieces that I wear all the time. They have shoes. They have accessories. It's ridiculous. Their website is so cute and well done. It's really easy to use. The shipping is really fast. They have a mm-hmm. huge variety of fits and styles. So I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, Mod Cloth is only for like vintage inspired stuff. It's like, yeah, they have a lot of that, but they have a million styles to choose from. Yeah. Um, and probably my personal favorite thing about the website is that uh, folks who buy from there can upload photos of themselves in the clothes that they bought. So you're not only seeing it on models. And I really, really, really love that feature of their website. It just mm-hmm. helps yeah, me. Yeah, you get to see it on yeah. people of, of you know, all different shapes and sizes. Exactly. And see how much they are enjoying wearing those pieces, which is always so fun. So I love them. Mm-hmm. They're amazing. Definitely check out Mod Club. Yes, I like I like those photos. It's like being able to see a review. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So to get fifteen percent off your purchase of one hundred dollars or more, go to modcloth.com. That's m o d c l o t h dot com, and enter the promo code gals g a l s at checkout. And do it now. Do not wait. This offer expires on September first. It's two thousand eighteen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So. Again, 15% off your purchase of $100 or more. Go to modcloth.com, use promo code GALS at checkout, and this awesome offer goes to September 1st. So do it now. Get your summer clothes. Treat your bod. Treat your bod. Treat your bod in mod cloth. Ooh. Claude and mod. (laughs) Claude, your bod and mod. (laughs) You're welcome for that copy, mod cloth. You're welcome. You're welcome. Trademarked. <laughs> we'll take our billion dollars now. All right. Billion so dollars. I have two cases that blend flawlessly into each other, as you'll see. 
Um, In creds. This is this first case is really just weekend at Bernie's in Russia. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah. What? It's bad. Oh my god! I just got weekend at Dimitri's. <laughs> <laughs> weekend at Vladimir's. <laughs> I also can't pronounce most of this, so I apologize in advance to our Russian listeners. Um, It's going to be great. It all started with three girls out on the town together in the Ulan Ud city center. Uh Yep, sure. Sure. Ulan Ude, the Uma Thurman city center. (laughs) Um, They're drinking. They're hanging out. They're mm-hmm. heading to a fourth friend's house, a, a male friend, probably who they think is cute. Um, yeah. He lives in the Kirzavod district of the city. Beautiful And they area. arrive at his home. Kenyon is very familiar <laughs> with the Kirzavod yep. district. Oh, Kirzavod, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, they arrive at his home and he's not there, so they decide to hang out and drink in his yard. Why not? We've been there. That's Yeah, that sounds yeah. like a classic times. weekend. Correct. Yeah. Um, as teens, because they are teenagers, are wont to do, while they're drinking in their friend's yard, they get into an argument. I couldn't Uh-oh. for the life of me figure out what the argument was about, but this was 2016, so it probably had something to do with Beyonce's Lemonade coming out, or <laughs> oh. Leo finally winning an Oscar, or <laughs> the release so of Stranger feels. Things, or mm-hmm. <laughs> the strong opinions on the reboots of Bridget Jones, Ghostbusters, and Gilmore Girls. <laughs> and Will and Grace. That didn't happen in 2016. Oh, I looked they were up top telling the future. pop culture moments of 2016, and these were my favorites. <laughs> it's part of my. Or it research. could have been something geopolitical, having yeah. to do with Ukraine. Literally, probably not though. Probably Beyonce's lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> so the argument. Did he cheat though? I mean, there's no way to know. The yes, argument dissolved into a. There's no way to know. <laughs> the argument dissolved into a fit. This is how we're going to kill each other. We are starting the fight that they had in their friend's yard. Let's beat each other oh, up no. in an elevator. Done. Oh, the my argument God. dissolved into a physical altercation with youngsters Christina B., 14 years old, Valeria K., 15 years old, attacking Sofia Potapova, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. Christina and Valeria beat and choked her into unconsciousness, believing her <gasps> to be dead. Oh, my God. Thinking Mm. on their feet, the pair hail a taxi cab Mm. and weekend at Bernie's their friend (gasps) into the back seat, propping her up and telling the driver that she had passed out from alcohol consumption and they needed to be dropped off by the nearby Salango River to get some fresh air. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh Uh-huh. Did they put, like, sunglasses over Probably. I mean... Maybe this is a generalization, but I feel like this speaks to the obtuse nature of men. This cab driver did not notice anything strange, including (laughs) when Sophia was discovered to be breathing in the back of the cab, and one of the girls put her hand over her mouth to quietly (gasps) finish the job while en route to the river. Oh, my God. She killed her in the back seat, and he didn't notice. Yes, Cabby really wanted that five-star rating on Lyft. I'm just picturing like a babushka scarf, but like tied over. So like it holds the lower jaw up. I mean, there are photos and that's not like of her dead, but of these kids. And I highly doubt any of them was wearing a babushka, but you know, it's possible. Um, Dimitri Stolyarov, an investigative Mm -hmm. committee official said, quote, the girls spent quite a lot of time sitting on the riverbank and deciding how to cover the crime. When they saw a passerby, They sat the corpse of their friend between them and propped it up, keeping it there until people left. So that it just looked like three girls sitting next to the river. Yeah, you you never would think. You never, ever would think that there was anything wrong with that. Oh, my God. Eventually, they dumped their victim's body on the shore and left the crime scene. I mean, this is just like... I wrote a note here that this is just beyond fucked up. Like, I can actually understand not condone let me make that very fucking clear i can Mm -hmm. understand how three idiot teenagers get into a drunk fight things get heated things get out of hand and somebody ends up dead 
It happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It happens to the best of us. I can see that. But then to <laughs> drag your friend around town and literally weekend at Bernie's her in several separate scenarios to give the illusion of her being alive while you try to figure out what to do next is not just and like. And then the best thing you can come up with is, is just jump her there and leave. her by the river. Yeah. yeah. This is not just a bad yeah. drunken idea. This is like absolutely fucking disgusting, like borderline serial killer behavior. It's so gross. Yeah. I don't like um, it. The term teen monsters would be splashed across headlines as the media reported on the crime. Um, this was all like in really shitty like rag mags and then the Siberia news. So I couldn't find any additional information on charges. I know they were charged with murder, but I don't know mm -hmm. where they are now. Um, but if they're not in jail, they're probably headed toward a future like this one. Oh. Uh oh, oh! this is the next case. S segue into another quick story of friendship, but this time not among teens. I could also uh -oh. very much see this being the fate of Kenyon and Lucy while Scott, Courtney, and I sit back eating popcorn and watching you two kill each other. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Almost happened yep. already. Yep. Yep. It has almost 66 happened. 66 year old Janet Clements and 57 year old Cynthia Weekly were roommates in a retirement home in Valdosta, Georgia. When Valdosta PD got a call to the Crestwood Nursing Home in response to a deceased patient, Chief Brian Childress said this was not out of the norm. Ambulances right. are often called to nursing homes and elder care facilities under these circumstances. But this time, something was different. Oh, God. VPD detectives and crime scene personnel responded to the scene and initiated an investigation. Detectives said they did not find evidence of any significant injuries, but requested an autopsy by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The GBI. A, the GBI. The brain MRI, the GBI. <laughs> mm -hmm. An autopsy performed on Cynthia Weekly concluded her cause of death was not the natural final step of growing old, but strangulation. Oh, shit. Ooh. As a result, she got choked out. Yep, we have, quote, now filed charges against Janet Clemens. Clements. Miss Clements has been charged with aggravated assault and felony murder. We were oh told that God. at some point in the middle of the night, there was an argument between the two roommates. <laughs> the topic yep. of said argument remains unknown. Janet. It was Beyonce's probably. lemonade. <laughs> Jan Janet never divulged the details of the argument, but it got heated enough that Janet strangled uh, mm -hmm. her friend Cynthia, her roommate Cynthia, and uh, mm -hmm. it killed her. The staff, quote, also told us that Miss Clements indicated that she may have hurt Miss Weekly, but she didn't just mm -hmm. hurt her, she strangled her to death. Again, it's unknown yeah. what the true motive for the murder was, as police refused to discuss more intimate details of the case with the public, so maybe, they, maybe mm -hmm. Janet did tell them, but they were like, are you kidding me? You're fighting over you know, that episode Whatever. of Maury that you watched this afternoon. We're Jello. not releasing that to the public. Yeah. The yeah. pronunciation of Tecumseh versus Tecumseh. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> Janet was charged Two with felony people. murder. Tecumseh and was the Native assault. American and William Tecumseh. And that's Sherman. my case. We know. <laughs> and special <laughs> thanks this week. <laughs> Uh, Special thanks to fan pick Missy Gallahue, which could also be pronounced Gallahug. Ooh, could it? Could it be pronounced that way? <laughs> to come see, to it's come see. It's probably so. not. Mm. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> oh, pajama, pajama. Um, Grace L, I'd like to get my pajamas on with you for your five dollar a month donation. Oh my! Thank you much. <laughs> Lauren needs no last name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for your $5 a month. Ooh. Ooh, I got a good one. Christy Wigglesworth. Oh, my God. Yes. That is my new Christy, favorite last name. You are worth a wiggle, girlfriend. Thank you. You're making me wiggle, yes. girl. <laughs> Kelsey Laurel or Yanny um, <laughs> at $5 a month. <laughs> Thank you so much. Laurel. 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 Okay, Yanny. So I, I heard it both ways at two different times. I heard it both ways at the same time, it, like immediately. Mm. I only heard it one of the ways, but I can't remember which way, and I don't give a shit anymore. Nailed it. Yep. <laughs> Sarah Nash, you are Nash absolutely amazing. Nashy woman. <laughs> Nashy. <laughs> Thank you for your Patreon pledge. Mm -hmm. And Katie Nelson 
We want to be in a half Nelson with you. (laughs) Do we? (laughs) I don't know. Molly Minx, you saucy Minx. Thank you for Mm. your $5 a month donation. Turns out there's a restaurant somewhere in Des Moines that is both a strip club and a restaurant. Is it called the Saucy Minx? It's called Minx. It's called Minx something. It should be called the Saucy Minx, and they only serve like really, really loaded saucy Saucy spaghetti and meatballs. Buffalo wings. (laughs) Oh. And everything has like 12 condoms. Yes. And then 12 condoms. (laughs) Yes. Oh. Oh my God. Such a good business plan. I'm in. All right. Abby Tribble, uh, we don't have any quibbles with your <laughs> generous donation. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Casey. No Tribble at all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were Tribble when you donated. <laughs> I knew you were Tribble when you, when you walked, walked in. in. Amazing. <laughs> um, Casey Blue Finnegan Finnegan. I, your middle name is Blue, and that's cool. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I've got an easy one. Ash Logan, thank you so much for your $5 a month donation. You're like the Logan to our X-Men. Mm, which know. is a reference, <laughs> I <is>. would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Gilbert. What's eating, My Gilbert, Gilbert Godfrey, oh. you are generous. <laughs> My Gilbert Godfrey, you are generous. That's bad. <laughs> I'd like to eat your grapes. <laughs> it's bad even for you, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne Masters, we want to delve deep into the fabric store of your heart. Oh, yes. I love Joanne Fabrics, for mm-hmm. real. And land on a pile of tool mm-hmm. and uh, batting. Carissa Richardson increased their donation from 2 to $5 a month. Thank you so much for sharing your rich Hudson's with us. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Another pledge increase from 2 to $5 a month from Andrea Nelson. Woo-hoo! Yes. We'd love to put you in a <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> If your last name is Nelson, you might want to rethink donating to our Patreon. <laughs> Nelson wrong with that. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> so stupid. All right. <laughs> Kylie Aaron, it was not an error to pledge to no. us. Thank you for increasing your pledge. Love you, Kylie. Uh, Taylor uh, Aviles. Aviles. Avila. <laughs> Kicking off our ten dollar a month tier, you're gonna get a fucking patriarchy wine glass in the mail if we can get your last name correct enough to have it mailed to you. Probably. I would say I would say it's probably Avilés or Avilés. Yeah, you're know. nailing it too. Thank you for helping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> All right. All right, Lane Lux. Lot speech. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. Sure. You're, yeah. you're giving Gluten us talk. lockjaw. Gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> we love you lot speech. <laughs> we do love you lot speech. Incredible. Thank you for your $10 a month. Megan Crump. That's an easy Crump. one. Crump it up. Crump it up. Crump it up. Crump it up. Crump it Yeah. All right. Applicable. <laughs> Ashley Sean Shawnee Sean Shawnee Sean Since we're just going to use that for everyone else Thank you for your $10 a month donation Thank you also to Summer Robinson It's always summer When you're Robinson you. When you're we're Robinson We're going to Robinson Banks. you blind And take your $10 a month donation <laughs> And Kia Fessler, fess up. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a As bad are one. you, Stephanie <laughs> Olivares. I love Ooh. olives. They are delicious. <laughs> we love all of you. <laughs> Olive all juice. Of us. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. All right, CJ. Uh, 
not given me much to go on here. This might be my friend CJ, in which case, hey CJ, I, if it's not my friend CJ, thanks anyway, CJ. I hope you're a DJ. I don't. Because then you'd be DJ CJ. We I don't know. And that's pretty cool. DJ you. Um, Kelly Ellis, <laughs> L is a letter. For the way you look <laughs> at me. Oh, is all the boys and I see. <laughs> be <laughs> very, very. Thank you, Sarah. Next one on our list for your $10 a month donation. God bless. Extraordinary. E. All right. <laughs> Kaylee is Garcia. even more than anyone that you know. <laughs> Would like to share her shout out with her rescue pup, Finley the Rescue. Oh. He's real cute. Mm-hmm. And also, everyone should check out his Instagram at Finley the Rescue. OMG. Finley yeah. spelled F I N L E Y, the rescue. Finley the so rescue. So cute. Oh, cutie. Okay. And is his middle name the then? I hope so. And last mm-hmm. name Rescue? Yep. Okay. Finley the Rescue. Katie the Taylor, thank you so <laughs> much for your <laughs> donation. We mm-hmm. really appreciate it. And kicking off the Trash Queen, starting with Leslie Jones, who I can only assume is the SNL cast member, and yep. now this is happening, yep. and oh my God, Leslie yep. Jones listens to our show. Oh my God. We're going to be at SNL. Yep, it's happening. Get in contact. We're going to be famous. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you also to fellow trash queen, Michelle Albert, Prince Albert. Totally worth it. (laughs) (laughs) I've been told. Oh, my God. Don't talk about me like that. (laughs) Prince Michelle Albert. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Maggie Ballard. Um... We will sing a ballad in your honor, Maggie Ballard. Uh, and she, they would like to wish happy birthday to their girlfriend, Casey Sheets. Woo! Who Casey is Sheets. A lady or person in the streets, but a Casey in the Sheets. Nailed it. And they are nice. giving at $25 a month. Oh, no, just yes. kidding. $25 once off. Just a once off. So if you, like my exes, are afraid of commitment, you can go ahead and go to our online merchandise store, wineandcrimepodcast.bigcartel.com, and make a donation mm-hmm. once off of your choice, basically. It's pretty tight. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, yeah. special thanks to our sponsor, Talkspace, mm-hmm. the online therapy company. That makes it easy, <laughs> affordable, and convenient <laughs> to match you with a therapist licensed in your area. And you can get 30 bucks off your first month by going to talkspace.com forward slash gals. Bring it full circle. There she is. I knew you needed the assist, and I swooped in because I'm a yeah. good friend, not a fatal friend. That's what true friends I'm do. I'm a fatally yeah. good friend. I have uh, non aggressive and non reproductive feelings for you. This is a platonic <laughs> friendship. <laughs> All right, we love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll we see you love next you. Week. We Thanks. will see you we next week. Love you. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Listening. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Two Drinks In is a weekly podcast that mixes two gays and two gals with alcohol, conversation, and a twist of the Minnesota experience. Each week we pull topics from a hat, some submitted by us, some by you, our listeners. Then we drink, discuss, and repeat. Shaken, not stirred. Of course. You can find Two Drinks In on nearly every podcast platform today, including iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, to name a few. We are the show that solves the world's problems one drink at a time. Think of it as Minnesota nice over ice. How you doing? 